Hey guys, Cat Demon 43 It's been a while. A lot of things were happening. It wasn't really fun to deal with, but yeah, stuff happened in, in my life. Anyway, the last time where we left off in this game, we ended up getting information on some areas and some places, so we are going to go and see what we can find out. And it's raining still, so yeah. Oh, I got me some chocolate milk. It tastes delicious. Uh huh. I thought we would be able to find some stuff, but maybe we can ask. I guess we didn't really get the. I thought we got the address. What the heck? <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. I think I I, I did a goof. I, I goofed. Hold on. Dang it. I got that number already. Oh yeah, we were supposed to call Doi. I didn't bother to call. <laughs> oh, man. McConnell Air Force Base, how can I help you? There we go. Hi. I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. Sweet. Do you know anything about what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I know that he was no longer stationed here at the base at that time. He'd left the Air Force decades earlier. But as a Conwell Springs citizen, sure, I've heard the rumors just like everybody else. How he was found by the sheriff all messed up, walking out of the woods with some kind of unexplained brain damage. Any theory as to what he was doing out there? I'm afraid not, ma'am. But I'm positive that it had nothing to do with this base or our operations here. Okay, what can you tell me about his service at McConnell? Well, Joseph Rain is a legend around here. His pile of metals weighs more than my car. Hmm. I was fortunate enough to meet him before he suffered his injury, and I must say, what an inspiring man. I'm positive that he would have made general if he'd stuck around. Any idea of why he quit? He looks so happy in the pictures from the war. Oh, your family, ma'am? Granddaughter. Well, then I'm sorry for your loss. I heard about his recent passing. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. So, about him quitting. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but some say the war broke him. PTSD. Me? I don't think so. When I met him, he had this aura about him, like he wasn't afraid of anything. Maybe it was his guilt. He ended a lot of lives, but that's just me speculating. Hmm. Gotcha. Thanks for the thoughts. What can you tell me about McConnell Air Force Base? This is one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. Hmm. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. The McConnell Flight School is well-renowned all around the country. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins, Joseph Vigilante Rain, and Brett Xavier Myers trained at this very base. Charles Wade, the great industrialist, did too. Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. I didn't... Okay, that's actually really cool. Uh, fun fact, uh, my grandfather was actually supposed to... originally went out to try to become a fighter pilot in World War II, but because there were so many, he ended up becoming stationed as a bomber pilot instead and ended up flying a Halifax bomber dubbed Friday the 13th and there's some photos of it too online you can you can check them out it's, it's pretty cool I don't see a reason to ask him about that yeah he wouldn't know about that do you recognize the aviator call sign cocky afraid not ma'am I know all the call signs here and I'm positive it's not one of them this isn't current though it might have been used as early as World War II oh that's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. Hmm. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who is still alive would be Charles Wade. All right, thanks. My pleasure, ma'am. Anything else I can help you with? Yeah, actually. I'm trying to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. 
He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you could make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. I'll try pleading, but I doubt it'll do anything. But what if it was a matter of life and death? Ma'am, if you're in a life-threatening situation, I suggest you call 911. Okay. All right, that's all. Goodbye, ma'am. Dang. Hmm. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. I know, okay. I'm trying to track down this young girl who drowned in the oh. lake here. Okay. How hard can a dead person be to track down? They tend to stay in one place, you know. Funny. Ha, huh, very funny, E. I don't even know her name, just when she died. Oh, well, there must be some way to connect a name to that date. Yeah, maybe. I'm trying to find this guy, but all I have is his nickname. Cocky. Well, what do you know about the guy? Not much. I think he was in the Air Force and served with Grandpa. Maybe you could try to find somebody in the Air Force who knew him then? Yeah, that might be worth a shot. Uh, I'm trying to contact Charles Wade. You know the industrialist? Wow, really? Why? It's complicated, but he knew Grandpa back in the day. They went to war together. Huh, must be super hard to get in touch with a person like that. Uh, yeah. I'm finding that out. Maybe you could ask someone in the Air Force. If he used to serve with your granddad, I mean. Yeah. Could be worth a shot. Okay, so I guess it was just me trial and error and figuring out how the hell? <laughs> Ask Lenny. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him. A hey, Lenny. <clears throat> do you remember anything about a girl drowning around here? Yeah, I remember my mom telling me about that. I was like six at the time, though. Do you remember her name? Oh, man. Not really. I was so little. I think it was something <clears throat> with an L. Linda? Laura? Something like that. Alright. I'll keep looking. Okay, so, well, there's stuff on that. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. <coughs> <clears throat> nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kev. I already asked him about that. Oh, you did? Hey, Lenny, do you recognize these men? Not really. Sorry. I don't want to show him that. I probably shouldn't. He might ask where I got it from. Look. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hey, Sheriff, need to talk with you. Let's hope this Hello, goes Sheriff. Off. Mind? Uh, if you mind. Thank you. I don't need to ask him that. Do you know anything about the drowning here in 1975? 16 year old girl? You have a memory problem? I told you I haven't been working here that long. Besides, even if I did, I wouldn't <laughs> tell you. Juvenile cases are a sensitive matter. I don't need to ask... I don't need to ask him that. Mm. He's new in town. I don't think he knows those men. Do you know anything about a drowning here in 1975? The victim was a young girl. You have a memory problem? Okay. I told you. Besides, even if I did, I would 
That's all for now. Okay. Good. Hey, you know, I'm gonna go ask the drunken bum. Maybe he might know something. <clears throat> hey, Sheriff. What's the deal with that bum? What bum? Hello. Hey. Hi there. Oh, uh, right. Could uh, you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Thank you. I'd like to leave. Go. Oh. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. I'm trying to- I'm sorry, he has a- Is there any- No can do. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Hmm. I can see that you're actually calling from the station. You say you're a cop? You don't sound like a cop. Am I going to have to report you for obstruction of justice, sir? Now that's hardly necessary, ma'am. Why don't you just put the sheriff on and we'll sort this out? Crap. Okay, come on. <laughs> McConnell Airport. Hi. Sure thing. I'm trying. I'm sorry. He has Is there any? Okay. And I do have. Hmm. Contacting Mr. Wade is crucial to an ongoing investigation. I can't divulge any details at this time, but I'm going to need that number right away. I don't believe you. Crap. So I do have to be sexist. Okay. McConnell Air Force Base. I'm Hi. Sure. You think this guy would end I'm up realizing? Is there any? No can do. I do. Hmm. Can't believe I have to be this. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's just because I'm a woman, right? Women don't belong in law enforcement. Is that what you're saying? That's so sexist. Now that's hardly what. Do you have any idea what I have to go through every day? Nobody takes me seriously. The dirty looks, the sexual innuendos, I've. Relax, okay? I'll check the files. Hmm. It's 555-7641. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Wade residence. Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. But... This conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. What a stuck-up, overclass witch. Well, she hasn't heard the last from me. I'm going to talk to that old man one way or another. Hmm. What happens if I try calling again? I 
want to put a message in here, but I'm not sure what. I think I'll sleep on it and try to figure out something tomorrow. So does that mean I should leave? Should talk to Grandma and then head back to the dorm, I guess? Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit? Not at all, dear. Bye, Grandma. I'll mm -hmm. be back later. So long. Show up, so maybe I have to call her, I guess. Hmm. I don't know what to do. It's me, Cat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Cappy. Hmm. Oh, duh, graveyard. Oh, now it kicks. Let's head to the graveyard. Laura. See if we can find a Laura here. No. Laura, Laura. Boy. Benjamin. Eleanor. David. No reason to go in there. A family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. Mm -hmm. no All right. Oh. oh. Oops. Lily Myers. I wonder what that kid is doing here all alone. Huh. And I missed what she said. Shoot. I'm gonna find out what happened to you, Grandpa. I promise. Hey, kid. All yourself. What are you doing? None of your business. Huh. I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around.
I don't see her. You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. A little boy. Maybe five or six years old. I should go look for his mother. I think what he means is mom is dead. So... I mean, he's alone in the graveyard. I shouldn't leave while that kid is alone. I come back and kid is gone. He's gone, isn't he? Yep. Kid? Guess he found his mom. Okay. <coughs> back to grandma's house. Maybe she recognizes the name. Sorry that I skipped that dialogue too. I have a cat. I'm trying to be goofy. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for? Not at all. I found out that the drowned girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, Jack, oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. But not the father, Jack, was it? No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. Whoa, she killed herself. That's news to me. Oh, that girl had been troubled for years. Truman made an official statement later. It was no accident. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. Okay. I don't see a reason to ask her. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. the phone today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, found an address. So we... I got the address already. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. I have a feeling that I'm gonna need the documentation on how that girl died, so... Police. Police. Yep. First. Hi, paperwork coming along, Lenny. Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. A jail cell. Hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. Not again. 
Here we go again. Okay, there's got to be something in here about Lily Meyer's death. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, uh, emergencies services are called by a resident near Conwell Lake who reports that a young female, approximately 16 years old, has been found dead floating in the water, presumably drowned in the lake. Officer arrives at the scene. EMT is en route, delayed by fog. The body is fully clothed and there are no apparent signs of foul play. Incident declared as a likely accident. A sweep of the resident reveals a suicide note matching the victim's handwriting. Witnesses report earlier mental health problems. EMT finally arrives. The girl is declared dead by medical uh, personnel and transported into city morgue. Coroner's report received cause of death is determined by drowning. No serious signs of struggle. Suicide confirmed. Oh, okay. Why'd she kill herself? Hmm. Looks like somebody did a Virginia Wolf. I wonder if there's more to it. I got the key already. I don't think. Okay. I should use this time to poke around. I'm gonna come back and ask him. About it? Uh, hold on. Yo! Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? This. I don't need to ask him that now. Oh. Do you know the Myers family? Supposed to live somewhere near the lake? Aren't they the ones whose daughter drowned a long time ago? Yeah, that's right. Might recognize them if I saw them, but that's about it. Okay, you were well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, oh, asking the cop was useless. Inside cabin, here we come. Oh, this is spooky. Somebody around here is a chain smoker. We have something in common. Good to know. Oh, gee, I would, but I forgot my swimsuit at home. Conwell Lake, where Lily Myers met her demise. I can see someone moving inside. Fifty-five degrees. Not too chilly, thankfully. Uh, it doesn't this? belong to me. Yeah. I don't want to take it without a good reason. Mm, okay. Yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. Lily was precious, special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I don't see how that's any of your business. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly, you have no idea what it's like losing a child. Goodbye. Just go away. Care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. What brand? Coralie Cinders. Extra long. You got taste. I'll give you that. 
Well, I suppose one smoke can hurt. That's what I had to do. Ugh. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh, now that was a good one. <laughs> you know what, Kathy? You're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before. I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Okay. Now that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Thank you. Sure, let's go. Oh, that's her son. Now, this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. Okay. Nate, be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. Yet another burial ground for those sweet, addictive, not to mention cancer-inducing sticks of tobacco. I'm a huge fan. Very lifelike. Contrary to popular belief, I don't believe the owls are more than what they seem. It's Nathan, Sue's mentally disabled son. Y yeah. Yep. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No, the nice red man. Now, what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? Sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his, just like his sister. I can smell something cooking. Elk, by the looks of it. They're fairly common in Conwell Woods. Nice painting. It's signed L.M. The daughter drew that. Anything else? Sue has nailed the tomboy look. I like it. So, you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she... that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth, that she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Hmm, all right. Anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. I see, it's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. I don't need to ask her about that. Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, 
happy, talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. <laughs> we didn't have much, really, and so she used what she could. Once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> on her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything counseling, support groups, antidepressants, nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up, and well, you know the rest. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. I don't need to ask her about... Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Oh, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. What do you do to support the two of you? Mm, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her, started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now, been there for 15. Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him, aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things, death and decay. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paintings. Okay. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich? Fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts, I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. Five thousand dollars. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh, did he say why? Nope, but I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. This... I'd rather just ask her about her daughter directly. Do you know what this key opens? Well, that's a bit of a weird question, ain't it? But no. Hey, Sue, do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph Rain. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And... No way. That's him. The man who bought the paintings. He's, he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Ugh. Another question for the elusive Mr. Wade. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I know. I wish I had a brace, though, for the top part so that I wouldn't have to wear this because this hurts. It cushions it. It cushions it. 
No reason to show her that. Yeah. It works. No reason to show her that. <laughs> I try. Okay. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back any time. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> At night? Hey, you're still up. <laughs> I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened okay. when I was a kid. There's a character in here that reminds wow. me of Melody. What a mystery. So what's the plan now? Uh... What's this? Some shut eye is the plan. I'm about to what pass the... out. Oh. Oh, yeah. I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. Just waiting for a response. Well, that makes one of us nighty. <sighs> Good night, cat. That's a speaker. Hey, Kathy, wake up. Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Both. Guess what? I got an idea. Melody. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Haha, <laughs> so you found all this evidence, right? No. Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? <laughs> you just well, plug it as into you know, like your iPad. I have or a computer. And, then... and I know this hacker guy, Dave, and. Oh, never mind. I'll just write you. I'm a also note. recording, Mom, well, so. <laughs> Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? <laughs> Love you, Mom. Sorry. Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time. If you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, oh. but we have to do that. It's the law. It's none of her business. It's my choice to make. I have enough shit going on with her already. This would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Oh. Right this way. Oh. Ugh, I hate that dream. Was she pregnant? <gasps> I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should too. Nah. Oh, what's this? Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is Angel Love without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555 2492, he can set you up with some software. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation. E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? Oh, please, like she actually uses a space bar? Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Eileen's girly suitcase. Okay, so There's a sticker e on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Summers. E. 
one there. Oops. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's see. Color printer. It's some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. This picture is in good shape. I don't think it needs to be analyzed. Oh, uh, this one. Hey, I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must have a hearing disorder. You must have a thinking disorder. Ha 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 ha, burn! <laughs> wow, just wow. So, uh, the software? Oh, yeah. No, can't. Not really. Ugh, <sighs> I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software, but not anymore. There was this misunderstanding and my network privileges were revoked. Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together, and let's just say he is one sore loser. Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way. He's such an ass. He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. He thinks the what is better than the what? I know, right? Can you believe that guy? Can't you just hack your way back in somehow? Isn't that what you do? He blocked the ethernet port in my room. I don't even have physical access. Don't you ever leave your room? Use a computer in the library or something. Aren't they connected to the network? No, there are cameras in there. Clyde is just waiting for me to make a move so he can get me expelled. You call yourself a hacker? Just use your brain for Christ's sake. Let's figure this out. Wow, you're so sassy, Nancy Drew. <laughs> well, okay, only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And... Ooh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. Mm, that sounds especially stupid. Well, not crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log on to the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can come over and set it up. But no way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. IBS? What the hell is that? Uh, you seriously don't want to know. I'll have my buddy drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll get you some juicy software. Quid pro quo, Claddy. Whatever, weirdo. We'll see. A thick 
white envelope. Uh-oh. <laughs> These must be the instructions from Dave. There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. One, boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system of the computer. Take the floppy out and reboot. Three, Call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed, and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it, and remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job after all. Okay. Well. <laughs> nah, I just got up. Okay. It has been a while, so yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm good. I think I'm done. Usually. So yeah, I've been playing for over an hour. I think I'm done. Yeah. Anyway. Let's hope things turn out pretty good. Here's open. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the random interruption. That was my mom. <laughs> so, yeah.